Welcome to CivilNet. My guests today are two attorneys, Alexander Khachadurian, who is with TK Equity Partners here in Yerevan, and Paul Harb, who is head of the legal department of Credit Bank in Lebanon, and also a member of the council of Amelik Bank here in Yerevan. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Uh, I've got to tell you, I'm not really sure I'm pleased that you're here because we're going to talk about not just a complicated topic, but a topic that has huge implications for Armenia diaspora relations. Um, and let me phrase it as best I can, and you will correct me. Uh, the United States has uh, adopted legislation called the Foreign Accounts Tra uh, Tax Compliance Act, huh? FATCA. Uh, which requires me, as a U.S. citizen, to declare my non-American income to the U.S. tax authorities. It's a bit more complicated than that, because it requires the foreign banks to disclose your non-American income to the IRS. So the requirement is of whom? The individual or the institution? The institution. The institution, the financial institutions. So in Armenia, I work, I pay taxes in Armenia, uh, and I put some of my money in the bank. Now, what does that bank do? Here's how it works. The main primary requirement of FATCA is to sign an agreement with Treasury. And that agreement... U.S. Treasury? Yes, U.S. Treasury. Who has to sign that agreement? Ar Armenian financial institution. Okay. That qualifies for FATCA. Basically every bank, every investment company. So what they're going to do, they're going to sign the agreement. They're going to undertake two major requirements. One of them is to register, and the other is to provide information to report on the accounts that they've got. So what the banks are going to be doing, they're going to be making a due diligence of every account they've got. And if, when they identify what, what is called U.S. indicia, they will have to look more on that account and, if necessary, report to U.S. authorities. Otherwise, if they don't cooperate, they're going to face harsh penalties from the, from the, from the, from the U.S. government. That's the general, that's the general uh, view. But when it goes to details, it gets really more complicated than that. Uh, for example, in Armenia, what, what Alex just said applies, for example, for Lebanon, whose government just decided not to sign any intergovernmental agreement with the IRS. Wait, before you go to the, the negative, the what if they don't, let's get clear on the table that we're really talking about two things here. We're talking about not just the responsibility of the individual to inform the American tax authorities, but also to pay tax on that, American Ultimately. tax Ultimately, yes. on that amount. Ultimately. Which has a set of problems we will talk about in a minute, and the responsibility of the Armenian financial institutions if Armenia signs with the U.S. Treasury to also report such funds to the Americans, right? Let me jump to that. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the matter is a matter of obligation to disclose information. Whose obligation? The financial institutions, once again. You have let's say a, an Armenian American, me, yourself, uh, living in Armenia, Armenian citizen, and uh, having your revenue in Armenia. Yes. As an American citizen, you are supposed to disclose such revenue to the IRS and maybe or maybe not uh, pay taxes thereon. But you have to disclose it. Right. FATCA is the mean that the United States created in order to grab, to catch those US citizens living abroad and they are, which are avoiding FATCA since I don't know when. So the easiest way to do it was to create this FATCA Act and thus transfer the responsibility, the, the responsibility and, and make out of the banks, of the financial institutions, IRS agents indirectly. Because what we... Sure. The, the bank's obligations today is as follows. The bank has to register with the, with the IRS before May 5th, 2014. In a week? In a week. And automatically then to sign an IRS agreement, a FATCA agreement with the IRS. 
for Armenia, there is this particularity that the Central Bank of Armenia is negotiating a Model 2 IGA intergovernmental agreement to be signed with the IRS. Model 2 IGAs uh, leaves the liability of reporting on the financial institutions, unlike the Model 1 IGA, which, uh, which allows an intergovernmental uh, transfer of information. Okay. So, <laughs> so under uh, Model 2 IGAs, the banks are still liable to provide the IRS with the annual reporting. How can we do that? Before, I will do. Well, <laughs> it's, it's very clear I'm talking to two attorneys because um, you are talking and focusing on the importance to the financial institutions, and I assume you will also tell us what happens if they don't. Absolutely. Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's finish the little, little part that really is a big part for a country like ours with a diaspora, and that is that basically the U.S. government has said, I can't do anything about the Virgin Islands and Belize and offshore this, that, and the other thing. Instead, I'm going to go after Salpi's income and double tax her because Armenia and the U.S. do not have the exemption from dual taxation treaty. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That FATCA will lead you to that. Okay. So, uh, so there are two things happening there as far as the individuals go, whether it's someone who works here or someone who's retired here and uh, receives their m funds, puts them in a bank here, right? Retirement funds are uh, exempt. exempt. Okay. All right. So there's the implications for the individual, uh, and we'll, we should talk about dual taxation in a little bit. Now the implications for the banks, and if they do, has Armenia signed? You're saying that's what the central bank it is, is about. It's being negotiated. Okay. Been told. So there's no question that it will get signed. Well, it should be signed. Yeah. Let's, okay. let's, let's put it this way. And if we don't sign, what happens? We go to the status that is similar to Lebanon's, which is the non-existence of an IGA, and then each bank is on its own. So he signs directly, each bank signs, or each financial institution signs directly with the IRS, a FATCA agreement, which is then a template agreement that you cannot negotiate. You just take it as it is. Is there, uh, co are there consequences for the country if they don't sign? No. no. Are there consequences for the banks if they don't sign? Well, typically yes. in the mo under Model 2, they will have to just do more work and... When the, when the government signs the Model 2 agreement, it means that they will sort of assist and they will assist Armenian financial institutions to, 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 to comply with that. Generally, uh, intergovernmental agreements get more exemptions for the banks. So it lightens the burden. Exemptions such as? Such as, let's say... Uh, bureaucratic? I mean, logistical exemptions? It might be, yes. Okay. So, so it will cost them less to do this? In, in, in terms of time and in terms of, of uh, cost to, in order to comply. What if we do not comply? The bank doesn't comply, the government doesn't comply, I don't comply. What happens? You have... <laughs> You're FATCA. smiling, I'm not happy. FATCA is not... This is very, very funny. If you read the regulation, FATCA is not compulsory. Okay. So each financial institution has the choice between participating or not to participate. But all American financial institutions are compelled first to withhold money that belongs to a non-participating FFI, and second, FFI, financial. Fi foreign financial institution, foreign, foreign as non-US right. financial institution, right. and second, to terminate their relationship with it. So if you are a non-participating FFI, you will close down within a week, I think. Because you lose all your corresponding banks, Absolutely, right? and you can no more deal with dollars. No dollars, no more dollars. Ah, so there's no problem if you don't want to sign. <laughs> <laughs> there's always but. Yes. All right, and how are the Armenian institutions reacting? Well, they, I mean, as, as, any, as any financial institution in the world, they were, at the beginning, when I was talking to the lawyers, they would say, what is this? How did the U.S. piece of U.S. legislation apply to us? Right. But then they, when when we got it, when we explained a little, and we said it's actually, it's not mandatory, but I mean, this there is an agreement that you're you're welcome to sign if you want to deal with with dollars. And they said, okay. So what is this? What this FATCA is about? Well, at the initial, 
what, what they were thinking is that when we get registered, we're done. So there's a registration process. You go on IRS portal, you register, you sign an agreement in there. But it turns out that actually when you register, it's just the beginning. Because you have the compliance process that oh, will take... Which is ongoing. Absolutely. Let's meet let me tell you a little bit about this compliance <laughs> process. Each and every financial institution will have to look into its existing accounts, existing clients, mm -hmm. and do a due diligence exercise on all of these uh, accounts. Mm -hmm. There are thresholds of account amounts mm -hmm. below which the due diligence might not be uh, done. This, these are accounts that are lesser than $50,000 for individuals and $250,000 for legal entities, corporations. And then you have those accounts that exceed $1 million where excess, uh, extensive due diligence needs to be done. So the financial institution will have to review all these accounts and investigate whether the account holder, not only the account holder, but also and especially the account beneficial owner, which might not be disclosed within the account opening form, is a US person or, as Alex just said, uh, represents any US indicia. Now, you have a definition of US person for FATCA and tax purposes that is completely different than the uh, general citizen residence category. It, yeah. it, go, it, it includes the, the passport holder, the native, the, uh, the resident, the green card holder, but it also includes, you'll laugh about that, if someone spends one, an aggregate of 183 days in the US during the last three years, including the current one, and Regardless of citizenship. Yeah, he is an American citizen for, for FATCA purposes. Although he needs a visa to get back to the US, and although he has no uh, TIN, tax identification number, nor a social security number, but he is considered for FATCA purposes as a US person, and thus banks will have to disclose his account opened with you here in Armenia to the IRS. So that's, th that's one thing. So when, let's go back a little bit to the, to the due diligence. When we find that we have a, an, a, an, an American person, a US person, that holds an account, even though he has a dual cit a citizenship or dual nationality, you will have to report it okay. once a year. Uh, the first year, the first reporting year, will take, the first reporting will take place on March 15 as a deadline, 2015, on the accounts of 2014. And this includes uh, only the account balance at end of year. But starting the consecutive years, each year the reporting goes a little bit further. So then you will have to report the balance and the payments, the, the cash flow, the entire uh, op uh, operation of the account, and so on and so on, so that the IRS will have, at the end of the day, the complete idea of what is, what are the, 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 the entirety, what is the entirety of uh, money uh, transfers and, and money operations of this U.S. person. So essentially, it's two tax filings for that person, the American April 15th deadline and this. This is not a tax filing. This is a reporting only. The FFI something. is reporting, and the IRS will then see if, according oh, the to FFI is reporting. Yes. I'm yeah. not. Okay. You're I not. The I client is, okay. is not is not reporting. Okay. The IRS will take the bank's report and refers to the same TIN number or same social, social security okay. number and see if such revenue was reflected in your declaration. Uh -huh. So if it is, you have no problem at all. But if it isn't you're in a big trouble. I am or the bank is? No, you are. Because okay. I complied, I reported. Okay. But you didn't. Shame on you. It's, very important. it's very important to understand that FATCA is about reporting. So what the banks will need to do, or investment companies, will, they will need just to report. Then IRS will summarize the information that they receive from a, from a US person and put it against the information that the bank provided them. Okay. Um, 
Two things. One, I should have Let said me it. Jump in, please. Here. It's not only about reporting. This is the main, but it might be also about withholding, because banks will have to withhold amounts from the accounts of non-compliant U.S. persons that has money in, deposited in their accounts. So in case those, those clients are not compliant with the IRS requirements. Is that an in-case withholding? So do they report the IRS says, oh, oh, I don't have this one, then they withhold or they withhold just to be safe? There is a process of withholding, yes. They might, it might be like that oh to make it simple. All right, the, so let me say what I was going to say and that is that uh, we don't usually spend time discussing US legislation in Armenia, but obviously we're doing this because our viewers, many of them, uh, diasporans who live here, come and go, uh, diasporans not of American citizenship, but who, have, who fit into that category. So I think this information is going to be really critical to them, but, but had there been a U.S.-Armenia uh, dual taxation exemption treaty, would we not be having this interview? No, we still would have that interview because uh, double taxation treaty is, is, is only after you report that you have an income in Armenia. So the thing is that, and, and if there is not only taxation, double taxation, but also an information exchange. Because the treaty covers two things basically, it's double taxation exemption, exemption from double taxation and information exchange. So our, our, our tax authorities would exchange information with, uh, with IRS. The, the, the implications on account holders, on right. US persons. Right. For uh, what uh, for uh, their uh, income that is generated from Yerevan, yeah, the tax Armenia. liability yes, would be diminished. It. Everything That's else would stay in but place. But the obligation of reporting and eventually of withholding would be would always be the same. Um, we're in for interesting times, uh, given the remittances, given again the diaspora's frequent and deep interaction. Uh, your brief is to encourage, I assume, all of our financial institutions to comply. Uh, what happens if five do and three don't? And this is a sector that we consider one of our strongest sectors, right? Our financial sector is well uh, regulated and, and transparent and all of that. What happens if five comply and three don't? Each financial institution that do not register as beginning or fails to fulfill its obligations under FATCA at a later stage, and thus might lose is its status as a participating FFI, will be in big trouble. And as I said before, will not have the chance to deal in dollars anymore, and thus will have to terminate its business, I, I, I'm afraid. I have, a, I have another scoop for you. <laughs> all, all over the world, all countries are waiting for the first FATCA implementation. So if it does good, if it generates money to the IRS, then you will wait two or three years before getting a new European FATCA, maybe a Chinese, Chinese FATCA, maybe a, uh, not maybe, uh, Canadian are now considering it seriously, and so on and so on. Russian and problem. And Russia has, I mean, I, I was just thinking that this is the flip side, huh? This is a way to also isolate our financial markets from the Western if we don't comply. Absolutely. This is a complete isolation if we don't comply. Absolutely. But uh, last question. So if three don't comply and they fall through all of these holes, if the five that do comply, mm -hmm. are they in they're any way okay. adversely they're affected? Yeah, they're yes. Five goes on. They're okay. Okay. This is the strategic move that the central bank did here by choosing the uh, Model 2 IGA, leaving the liability on each bank, bank by itself separately. So if this bank does not comply and is in trouble, this implies that the effects of such non-compliance will be limited to this bank and not to the whole sector, which is not bad. Well, if I wanted to ask a political question, I would say, is this the kind of legislation that our government needs to adopt in reverse so that we can find out which funds are smuggled away where there are, that there are, are some, not having are, tax revenue implications for us here? There are some, uh, some uh, uh, countries, uh, in particular the UK, 
that signed a, a, an IGA with the IRS uh, where it required uh, reciprocity. And this is, yes. This we didn't require? No, we didn't, but I mean, for our, because Armenian tax regimes are completely different from, from what they have in the U.S. In the United States, you have a worldwide tax. So whatever the income is generated from, you still have to report, and there might be taxes. In Armenia, it's Armenian sources tax. So basically, for our authorities, it would make much sense. It to, would not make it would not, it wouldn't make much sense to go and ask for reciprocity. Unlike Russia, because I, as far as I'm aware, what Russians did, they asked for reciprocity, and so probably U.S. and U.S. United States, they said, okay, we're fine with that. We're going to be disclosing who are the Russians, people with Russian indicia who, who have accounts in, their, in, in, in U.S. banks. So when should we invite you back? Uh, how many months will it take to see how this process is going? Next, uh, next, uh, next item on the agenda is the first reporting which is March, March 2015. 2015 yes. Well, all right, we will somehow sit. But there, is, will, there is a lot we will, then, we will then talk more about uh, withholding and, and what are the withholdable amounts that, that are subject to. Thank you, I Thank think. You. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think, as I said, this is something that's going to be very interesting for uh, our diasporan community, as well as obviously for Armenia's financial institutions. So thank you, Paul Harp. Thank, thank you, you Alex Khachadar. Can I add one more thing? Please. I have two advices, uh -oh. one for the financial institutions and one for the U.S. Yes. account holders. Yes. For the financial institutions, I say, do comply. And for the individuals, for the account holders, I say, go clean. That's it. <laughs> thank you. From the mouths of an attorney who knows of what he speaks. <laughs> Again, thank you, Paul Harb, uh, the Lebanese Bank Credit. Uh, and thank you, Alex Khachadrian, who's a managing partner at TK Equity Partners here in Yerevan. And we've been talking about interesting new developments that will affect uh, both Armenia's financial institutions as well as U.S persons, people who spend a whole lot of time in the U.S. or are citizens and residents and their finances here in Armenia. Stay with Civil Net.